Nick Beasley, I'm the Income Maximisation Director at Mobisoft and today I'm joined by John Brownbull, my colleague, who is Director of Customer Success here at Mobisoft. Uh, so John's been in the sector for around 10 years now, three years at Mobisoft. Uh, we've both worked in income and transformational roles in the past and today we're going to be exploring uh, former tenant careers in more detail. So with that in mind, John, could you start by telling us some myths and misconceptions around former tenant careers? Thanks Nick, I think it's a, a really great question. First of all, I think the main misconception around former tenant arrears is that they're difficult to collect or that there's no return. I think as a result of that misconception, uh, you tend to find that uh, collecting the debt is not a resource priority. Organisations will find there are other areas that you want to focus those resources on. I think similarly, find that resources um, are not finding they've got the right systems to use and those systems themselves aren't particularly optimised, particularly around uh, former tenant areas. I think most organisations have provision in place, so they've got a bad debt provision and as a result they're almost expecting to find themselves in a situation where they can't collect their arrears and they're going to write it off. And I think over time that convention has just not really been challenged and it's just accepted by boards and everyone else in the organisation. Yeah, that's really interesting. So do you think then the attitudes are changing towards former tenant arrears? Definitely. Certainly the last 12 to 18 months we've certainly seen a change. So um, I think one of the key reasons is revenue. Um, there's a significant amount of former tenant debt out there. Organisations are recognising that that's an option to, to bring some revenue in to develop and grow. Um, I think the other thing is you know, bad debt provision, audit and risk, those types of committees give real scrutiny on, on what organisations are doing and it's a real headache for the FD uh, at the moment. Similarly, former tenant arrears is affecting current tenant arrears, um, so certainly towards the latter stage of a tenancy, those arrears are building up um, and impacting the current tenant arrears collection um, figures. I think the, setting the financials aside, um, there's probably a challenge more broadly with society. Um, it does impact those former tenants, it creates financial exclusion, it limits their rehousing choices. So there's a lot of reasons that aren't just about the financial to, to uh, manage former tenant arrears better. Write-off processes, organisations spend an awful lot of time and effort managing write-offs and there's no real return there for them. Um, systems, I think systems, you know, we, we have our own solution, are starting to improve and develop and allow providers to have different options to collect the former tenant debt and do a much better job. And I think more broadly as a sector, uh, there's definitely a need to deliver a more unified approach to the mutual benefit of all. Okay, and that's really interesting. And when you say a unified approach, what would that look like? I think for me, it's probably fundamentally an extension of the positive payment culture that all social landlords are trying to instill in, in, in their tenants. I think allowing a former tenant debt to go unrecovered doesn't bode particularly well for the following landlord. So each provider has a vested interest in tackling former tenant debt because when the tenant moves on, they're less likely to cause debt or encounter debt again. I think if you look at things like um, the referencing process, you know, that's not particularly good at the moment. One provider will be focused on their needs, which is pay the rent up front. Um, tenants aren't particularly motivated to give accurate information about their debt and yeah. former tenant arrears and that sort of thing. So I think although the sector works really collaboratively across most things, when you come to look at former tenant debt, it's quite disjointed and in a lot of ways there's conflict between different landlords as, as the customer moves between the two, um, albeit inadvertent. Okay, so John, to me it feels like the, the sector needs to be adopting some more common protocols around former tenant arrears. Is that something that you would agree with? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the sector isn't as joined as up as it could be. Um, thinking of things like referencing uh, needs to be much more um, robust and realistic. I think it's very difficult for a tenant who's perhaps got other debts to talk to a future landlord about those. A tenant might feel that it might bar them from securing the property that they want. Um, so that process definitely needs tightening up. Um, I think early communication between organisations is really important as well. Um, rather than a two-way conversation between the tenant and the new landlord, it's involving 
uh, all three, um, preferably around the same table or, or virtually whatever that would look like. As a sign up using both landlords and getting them involved at that stage would certainly make a lot of sense. I think uh, measures such as a conditional offer that's based on the closing balance is really important. What can happen is um, a reference is sought when there's no debt and then that debt accumulates after the reference and the new property has been um, secured. So that would encourage the tenants to keep their, uh, their rent clear and, and free of any debt. I think um, providers might want to consider things like reciprocal debt arrangements where if you've got a lot of tenants who came from another landlord in your locality and vice versa, you perhaps take the responsibility from that landlord in managing that debt on their behalf. That can make an awful lot of sense as well. Um, I think things like um, the responsibility for claiming benefits, that needs to come into conversation much earlier. A, the sorts of benefits you can claim when you've got two properties, but also the role that is expected a tenant in, in, in that regard, I think it's really, really important. I think when it comes to moving, it's costly for any of us to think about moving home. If you're a tenant in a social let property, you might have a very low or limited income. Um, and as a result of that, you know, finding the money to hire a removal van or furnish a new home is gonna be a challenge. But I think it's important the landlords are up front when they have those conversations with tenants that there is a cost, how are you going to meet that cost and what it looks like, because it's inevitable and it's important that it's had. I think um, one of the key things for me is rent in advance. I think you know asking for rent in advance makes an awful lot of sense. It's commitment from the tenant. Um, it also helps you understand and be aware if there's any financial issues. But what you can do is inadvertently pass a problem onto a previous landlord by moving that tenant with that debt um, because they've saved up for the new property rather than paid the former tenant arrears. So asking a tenant, you know, where is that coming from is a really important question. And, and again, doing that in a spirit of openness and honesty um, is important too. I think the final one would be um, thinking about flexible notice terms, you know, four weeks doesn't work for everyone. The new landlords trying to get the tenant in as quickly as possible, they're looking at the relet times, the old landlords asking you to wait four weeks. Um, it's obviously it's going to be a bit of a pinch point there when it comes on pressure. So thinking a bit more flexibly about those things, I think they're all um, options for landlords to start to look at. Okay, just touching on that then, what are the kind of things that you would be asking a prospective tenant then before, before letting that property? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's loads of questions in a good fact find, so um, I won't repeat them all. I think the obvious ones that come to mind with me would be how you're going to maintain the rent on your current home before you move in with us, or you might have two, three weeks obligation with your previous landlord. Have you thought about that? What does it look like? I think um, asking questions around things like repairs, are there any outstanding repairs? Uh, you know, these are other former tenant debts, it's not just the rent. So will there be any costs there that you might need to be meet or talking to us about, assistance with that type of thing? That earlier point about the cost of moving, you know, most social housing properties, whilst they're a good standard, they're often not furnished, need new carpets. Um, any tenant who's perhaps got aspirations about the new home is going to want to think about those things. And again, I think the landlord having that honest discussion about how they're going to fund those things and pay for them is important. There might be assistance they can give, but equally you might be able to guide that tenant in terms of what they should and shouldn't do um, with meeting the source of those payments. I think you know, personal responsibility and benefit claims is really important. So, A, having the conversation with the tenant that you've actually thought about you know, the benefit claim and, and what you might be able to claim across two properties or to help you move between the two, but actually instilling that understanding that it's that tenant's responsibility. You know, of course, when the circumstances need it, you know, you can intervene, but if not, it's very much uh, down to the tenant, they're empowered to do that. And I think that final question, you know, rent in advance, what is the source of that, those funds? How are you meeting that cost? I think it's a really important question. No, that, sound, that sounds really good. 
From an organisation perspective then, what would you say is a realistic collection rate that they could achieve with former tenants? We get asked this all the time. It's a really difficult question to answer. Um, and it's not really through being evasive or anything like that. I think there are so many variables, but that shouldn't excuse starting to understand it or trying to measure it. So I think first and foremost, um, you need to look at prevention of former tenant debt and what are the metrics you can put in place around that. Um, there are all those pressures that tenants face, uh, moving costs, furnishing, um, navigating the benefits landscape, your other debts, putting right any repairs. So it's against quite a difficult backdrop for that leaving tenant. But some of the, the, the metrics you might want to consider are whilst they're still a current tenant. Um, so average arrears on termination, I think that's really important. If you can measure that by team, by patch, by officer, you get a good sense of how well um, end of tenancies are being managed by th that team or, or, or those staff. I think looking at the percentage of tenants that leave you in rent arrears is really important. Even tenants who pay rent really, really well and have a seamless history, those last two or three weeks of that tenancy uh, is where it can all start to go wrong. So I think measuring that's important. Uh, things like the collection rate in the last four weeks, just honing down on your organisation collection rate in the final four weeks of tenancy. If you start to measure it, you can start to develop your processes around that and try and improve on it. And I think if you do those things, um, your current tenant arrears will actually improve and your debt that's transferred to former tenant arrears should fall. I think when it comes to former tenant debt themselves, it is difficult to establish what a good collection rate looks like um, because there's so many variables at play. Um, there's things like the age of debt, uh, the newer the debt, more likely you are to collect it. Some organisations have a, a, quite a misbalance in the age of debt and the profile that they have. Um, the type of debt um, that, that, that is there is important. You know, what is the source of that debt? How has it come about? Is it a tenant who was deceased, for example, or was evicted or moved on voluntarily? They can all play a role in how likely they are to recover um, that former tenant debt. I think as a starting point, some of the good things to think about measuring would be collection by age of the debt um, and break it down that way. Um, looking at officer performance is an obvious one. Um, certainly the officer who is responsible for collecting the former tenant debt, but also looking at the, the officer who held that account as a previous current tenant. I think that's really important as well. Um, and having an understanding if there's any relationship there between them and, and the debt that occurs. Of course, that helps you develop any training needs or recognise good performance, best practice, that type of thing. I think um, debt transferred to write-off is a really important measure as well. Um, with a former tenant area, there's only two ways it's going to go. It's either collected or it goes to write-off. And if you can start to understand that, you can start to manage it in the right way. Then there are obvious things, payments taken. Um, I think looking at um, transactions that are, you know, arrangements, that sort of thing that have been made are important because in most cases that's how a former tenant debt would end, would be some sort of arrangement. Okay, so with that being said then John, in your opinion what does a good collection model look like? I think there are probably a number of elements to a good collection model, Nick. I think, you know, first of all, first and foremost really systems, I think a system is absolutely key. Um, you want something that can identify debt early, um, preferably whilst it's still a current tenant and prevent that debt from happening. I think um, with former tenant arrears, systems that maintain a focus on arrangements and look at the prospect of collection versus the age of debt are really important. Arrangements is often a common outcome. If you're successfully making contact, you come to an arrangement but also um, understanding the, uh, where to focus resources, the age of debt's really important, a system that helps you to do that. I think a system that gives officers a common solution to what they're using for current tenant arrears. So our own customers using RentSense, our former tenant arrears module, a common platform, same look and feel, helps that seamless transition. And then I think a system that allows um, performance to be 
monitors are measured is really important as well. If you can get from that system the right reports, data and information, then that will really help you um, understand how you're performing and improve on that performance ultimately. I think the second one would be um, thinking about your model, how you have your team set up. And it varies by organisation. You know, some organisations will have dedicated offices, others it will be the responsibility of the, um, the offices managing the current tenant arrears as well. I think there's no right or wrong answer. It depends on the organisation. I think they've all got strengths and weaknesses. I think if you've got FTA officers, the specialist, um, they're going to be highly focused. Um, they're going to understand how a former tenant arrears and those interactions are markedly different. Um, you don't necessarily have the option of taking someone to court or perhaps a tenant being concerned with losing the home. However, the flip side, if you look at a current tenant arrears officer also managing a former tenant debt, then the advantage there is um, they've seen the, the whole customer journey throughout and they've managed that whole transition and much more familiar with the case. And they're not in a position where they might be just transforming former tenant debt to another, another officer. Um, I think the third would be to look at um, processes. So what tends to happen with former tenant arrears is it can protract over time. You know, people trying to manage debt that are two, three, four, five years old. So maintaining a limited time frame is really important. You know, act quickly and get the uh, the outcome you want, whatever it is, whether it's right or for collection, um, concluded as quickly as possible. I think processes that have got um, a creative approach to locating tenant are really important as well. Um, if you can't find or locate that tenant, you can't have the conversation. And again, this can be helping teams um, at the front end get better at collecting data about where tenants move into, but also the detective skills which make that type of role quite unique are really, really important. I think um, Thinking differently as well about a former tenant debt. If you're looking at a, a customer who has perhaps left you after working through an escalation process, you could argue that that escalation process didn't work because the tenant left and they left in debt. So why would you do an escalation process again? You might want to adopt a different, a different, more constructive style. I think um, from a, an attitude perspective or an expectation perspective, um, sometimes former tenant debt is viewed as inevitably written off. I think part of your process should uh, embed that expectation that you will collect yeah. the former tenant debt and it's not a foregone conclusion that it's written off. And I think being pragmatic about the cost of collection is important as well. Um, you can certainly bring in more revenue than a service and systems might cost you. That's definitely achievable. But there are lots of other good reasons to manage former tenant arrears and we spoke about some of those earlier so the impact on the tenant and their future choices is certainly one but also it helps um, tenants more broadly understand and appreciate that former tenant debt isn't tolerated by that organisation or by the sector and they're less likely to encounter debt in the future even if it's not with yourself but with another landlord. I think the fourth point would be to be thinking about people. There is a specific skill set with a former tenant arrears officer, I think. Um, you've got to have that ability to negotiate without the sanction of, of court and eviction. You've got to have those detective skills we talked about earlier. You've got to be creative, dogmatic, um, really driven and motivated by, um, by collection or, or a positive tenant outcome or both ideally. And I think Having an ability to influence other roles in the organisation is important for a former tenant arrears officer. You know, you're going to want a case that's moved over to you with all the contact details there, the right history, the right notes. The only way you're really going to be able to do that is if you can communicate well with, with your colleagues in those other areas. John, how can a system like FTA Essentials help with former tenants? Obvious question really, I suppose. Uh, I think for me, um, giving you an accurate manageable caseload is really, really important. Accuracy is absolutely critical. Um, I think having 
a common system or a common platform that your team are using to collect current tenant arrears and former tenant arrears is really useful if you're a RentSense user. I think um, the fact that it's predictive analytics, so it's smart, it's really clever in terms of the way it is looking at uh, the arrears history, the transactions, and helping the officer understand which cases they need to be looking at next. I think as a solution, um, focusing on high yield cases is one of the key benefits. By high yield, I don't mean uh, the highest balances. Uh, this is the most likely to yield a payment to you as an organisation or an officer collecting the debt. I think the fact that the solution is, is, is optimised to support common outcomes, um, those essentially being that the case is collected usually as an arrangement on a relatively nominal amount or as a write-off and that write-off process can be effectively managed. So I think they're two really important parts of the capability. I think that the next one would be its reporting insight. I think that's really important so that you can understand how you're performing and what your debt looks like, what can you can prevent, what you can collect and what needs to go into write-off. Certainly an area that we find most systems that are incumbent are, are quite weak in is actually being able to understand that performance. I think um, write-off is important for most organisations. Absolutely you want to collect the debt, but being realistic, often what you're trying to do is prove to your executive board that you have undertaken the right steps to meet that write-off criteria and that can be very problematic without the right tool. So this solution has been optimised to help customers with that. I think thinking about other things that um, happen from time to time, different legislation. So at the moment, um, one of the key features we have is breathing space. So we can help a landlord manage a former tenant debt who is subject to, to breathing space and do that differently to, to other types of debt that they manage. And I think having a, a system that is capable of um, reacting quickly and ahead of any change in legislation is absolutely key and that's what this solution does. I think unfortunately the nature of former tenant arrears, you know, sometimes you're managing debt of someone who has become deceased, um, that needs real sensitivity. So this product's been optimised in a way that really helps you manage those types of cases differently. Um, to someone who perhaps has gone because of an eviction or an abandonment or different circumstances. We also have, and I think one of the most important features as well as optimising your ability to collect former tenant debt and manage write-offs is the prevention of former tenant debt. So there are rules that are working within the solution that are working hard in those last three or four weeks of tenancy to ensure that that debt doesn't happen in the first place been some fantastic outcomes from that as well. And I think the final one is, is more a commercial perspective and that is having a value-led return on the investment. So you know how much the solution is going to cost, but you've also got a good idea if you resource it effectively, um, what sort of return you're going to get uh, for that investment. Okay, and something that we hear a lot about at the minute where would bulk texting or auto dialing, for example, fit in with former tenants? Yeah, we see, see that a lot. It's something we call dumb automation. It's definitely got a, a part to play within the sector. Um, it's technology, though, that's been around sort of 30 or 40 years. Um, what you tend to find with that type of solution is it's initially effective, but that effect is lost over time. Um, lots of suppliers available and out there. Um, I think you perhaps need to be cautious about the revenue model, which can often be based on the volume of text, but also having to think about how effective that solution is in actually practically changing behaviours. Um, if they're truly effective, they're a temporary measure because using the right insights, what you will do is encourage long-term behavioural change, you tend to find that doesn't actually happen with those solutions. Your actual call volumes, your texting volumes will stay broadly the same. Um, it can take your effort um, to feed the hopper, if you like, um, to, to, to do that. Um, and tenants, particularly those with former tenant debt, you know, they do change the number quite a lot. So if you're dependent on those, you might get some initial success, but in the longer run, 
you need to be much more creative than, than dialers and bulk texting. Um, and ultimately, what they don't do is address the fundamental challenge, which is focusing officers on accurate workload and the right cases. Um, it is a bit of a sledgehammer to crack a nut, really. Thank you very much for that, John. I found that really interesting. If you'd like to learn more about this, please contact us on the details below.